Hey, we are in the studio today. Uh, I'm Jen Wiggs and I'm here with Mallory Donahue who's doing the filming for me. And I'm at Orr Street in Columbia, Missouri. And I wanna answer today's question, which is what watercolor paint should I buy? People always ask this. And in a certain sense, it doesn't really matter what you buy. You want to explore what you have. But the biggest thing is you can't really buy student grade watercolors. You have to buy professional watercolors. Um, they just behave totally different. Student grade, you'll have to buy it three times, which is actually the price of the professional. So you have to invest in good paint. And like I've told you before, watercolor as a medium, the one thing that sets it apart from everything else is the actual supplies have a bigger part of the end product than in any other medium or medium. So, um, so invest in good paint. You can buy Winsor Newton. Um, you can buy Schminky. You can buy um, Daniel Smith. I like Daniel Smith. Um, and buy, I buy a lot of their paint. You can try buying three uh, primaries. You want a transparent red, a transparent blue, and a transparent yellow. And so the reason you want transparent is when you start to mix color, you will get a beautiful color wheel using those transparent pigments. Just because it's a watercolor does not mean that it's automatically 100% transparent. And when I buy paint, I actually mark it with a Sharpie on here. This is a transparent. This one has an S on it. It's a semi-transparent, and that is important. So Windsor Yellow, Windsor Red, and Ultramarine Blue are three colors that you can buy that are all transparent. Now, how are you going to find out which ones are transparent? You can use a chart like this one. I bought this one, all of their colors. These are all Dan Smith colors. These are the actual color uh, on here and you just take a brush and wet it so you can try it. It's very cool. I bought this on Amazon. So you can get a chart. You can also, when you're looking, if you're shopping for paint online, you can go where it says item description, like on Dick Flick, hit that and it'll tell you everything about that pigment, the source of the pigment, It'll tell you whether or not it's transparent or not. So that's one thing. Now, another blue that you could use, if you wanted to, would be Windsor Blue, which is actually a trade name for a phthalo blue, but it is blue dominant. So that's why I am suggesting ultramarine blue. Now you could have used cobalt blue up here, but sometimes cobalt blue is it depends on the manufacturer whether or not it's transparent or whether it's a semi-transparent. Okay, so this is Windsor Yellow here, and this is Ultramarine Blue, and this is Windsor Red. Down here, everything the same, but a different blue. And you can see how much stronger this particular blue is, but it's more of a middle range, whereas the Ultramarine is redder. The ultramarine is a little bit of a redder. It, it'll give you, and you can really see the difference in the purples. The purples are better with the ultramarine, in my opinion, in this, in this situation. But there's a lot of varying, so it varies. Now this wheel, this is a 12 step wheel, which is very, um, which is everything that you need. So we have the primaries, the yellow, red, and blue. Then we have the secondaries, the green, the orange, and the violet. And then we have the tertiaries. So we've taken, uh, we'll have red violet, blue violet, blue green, yellow green, yellow orange, and red orange. Now the reason, when you ask, how can I make better color in my paintings? The way to do that is having your colors be related. That's how you do it. It's not by adding more color. You definitely don't want to add more. You want to, you want to, you want less. Okay. You want to restrict your choices. So all of these are related. When you start thinking about what each of these parent colors is composed of, it's composed of two of the other, right? 
whatever. So, um, so pay attention to that, okay? And you should make your own color charts. Now that we're thinking about color charts, I found this one this morning. This is mine from 1998, which is great, right? So I've, I've made little samples of all the colors and I've written underneath it what it is. And you should do this at home. And when you do it, don't do it on cheap paper. You're gonna be tempted, I know you are. But don't do that. Use the good paper that you're actually going to be painting on so that you can get a really good, accurate representation, okay, of what that color is. Now, while you're in there, you should uh, make some value charts for yourself. These are five-step value charts, and you can do this for each of your colors, and you should. Now, remember with watercolor, it's water that carries the pigment, right? So you'll see in my palette that each of these has a little pool in it because I have come in here with this dropper before painting and added water to the pigment because when you're painting, I want you to dip into the pool, not into the gummy paint, okay? Does that make sense? You want to dip into a pool when you're mixing colors. All right, so here's a five-step value chart, and I did it in sequence by just adding more water as I go, which is tricky. Now, if you find that difficult, what you could do is just do a whole page of different values of the one color, and then cut out the ones that fit in the sequence. That, that is an easier sort of way to do it than trying to control it as you're going along. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my painting uh, table. Uh, most of you, uh, um, well, there are a lot of different ways you can set up. I have paper towels here, but I did want to remind you that if you're trying to cut down on paper, that you could use handy wipes. You could put a stack of handy wipes on your table, and then you just throw them in the washing machine. So if you're trying to cut down on paper, um, that's something really nice. I do have test sheets here on my table. So when I'm painting, I can test out a color on here. Um, before it goes onto the piece that I'm working. So that's really important. Your test sheets will be scraps of the actual paper that you're using. It's not gonna be copy paper or, you know, post-it notes. It's gonna be um, actual paper, okay? So I have my palette here with deep wells that I have put color in and I have my dropper, I have a very big water container. Don't, I see students do this where they have this much water <laughs> and their water is dirty every time they, they do that. Now, another trick about that is when you're cleaning your brush, dip your brush into here, don't swish it around. Dip it into here and scrub the pigment out on your thing here. That keeps, your, that keeps you from having to get up and change your water like every 10 seconds. I also have a spray bottle, which is my favorite thing. This is one of the ways I use to get these pools um, wet. And also I clean my palette with it and I use Kleenex. So I, I spray this and then I wipe this down with Kleenex. And I have a cutting surface on here because I do a lot of like mixed media pieces and I do a lot of uh, bigger pieces. I have sable brushes, but I also have um, all different kinds of nylon or synthetic brushes. And then I have like really horrible brushes for um, masking fluid or for something like that. And I think that's about it for what I have on the painting table. And I want to thank you for joining me here today. You can go to jenwigs.com and follow me and see all the uh, shenanigans that I'm getting up to here in the studio. And um, I appreciate it if you would like and follow this and I'll try to uh, make some more videos as soon as I can.